Hello everyone, Andrew Stibberts here with Sunset Learning Institute. In a recent video for Cybersecurity Awareness Month, we did a quick introduction to some entry level, some fundamental cybersecurity certifications. So as a follow up, I wanted to do a review prep on the exam for Cisco's CBR Ops, the Cybersecurity Operations Fundamentals course. Uh, well, let's talk about some details about that exam and what's going on there, some, some test prep and some studying tips. So what we're gonna go through in this video, we're gonna talk about the background details, the minutia about taking the exam, timing, cost, and whatnot. And then let's do, take a quick look at the exam topics. What are they going to ask you about? Then I'm gonna have some recommendations about where you can study for those topics. And as everyone always asks, how do I practice? I'll have some recommendations about some practice questions, some practice tests that you can take. So for the exam details, first off the exam code, it is number 200-201 CBR Ops. Make sure when you're signing up for the exam, you don't accidentally take the wrong one. And it is currently $300 per attempt. If you fail, you have to wait one week before you can attempt again. Now currently it is 120 minutes to pass, uh, to uh, it's 120 minutes total exam time, uh, 120 minutes to pass, 120 minutes total time, and then you get 95 to 105 questions. And so the number of questions you get will be based on the relative weighting of the questions. Uh, I've seen a couple folks heard some feedback where they had fewer questions but they were more complex, and so a little more heavily weighted. Currently, the passing score is 825 out of 1,000. As we all know, Cisco might, they reserve the right to change what a current passing score is uh, based on the exam difficulty and updating the exam content. So as of right now, it's 825 out of 1,000. And currently, the only language it's available in is English. So now, what are they going to ask you about? What are the exam topics? Well, I'm pulling this list from the Cisco Learning Network, and we'll put all the, all the links I'm gonna show you, we'll put those in the description below the video. But they tell you what's on that exam. And first off, as we go through the course content, the security concepts is your high-level overview, that 30,000-foot view of what is the world of cryptography, the world of network security, host security, what's the big picture? Then we get into security monitoring, where we start talking about tools as well as types of data, the alerts and the types of alerts that come out of our sensors, and how do we use those? How do we stay aware, monitor our environment, and then use that in the cybersecurity investigations. We then start looking at both host and network analysis techniques. We look at the different attack vectors for bypassing firewalls, by bypassing IPS devices, getting down to the host itself, uh, versus the network, attacking routers, attacking switches. Well, what's the difference there? And how would you discover that? Then we finish up by talking about the overall yeah, policies and procedures getting into an overall investigation, what's some of the compliance regulations that we have to deal with? When we talk about evidence, the chain of evidence, how we maintain that, make sure that uh, only the authorized personnel are handling evidence, going through the investigation, taking records throughout the investigation, and then follow up when we're working within a SOC, uh, different metrics that we deal with, like time to detection, time to mitigation, time to containment, how do we measure uh, is what we're doing actually working well. So overall, all these topics together give a good foundational level for someone operating as a T1, Tier 1 cybersecurity analyst. So now I get the question, well, where do I go to learn all this content? Well, you've got a couple options. First off, the first two options here for the bulk of the content, you're gonna do one of these. You're either gonna read the student guide from when you attended the CBR Ops course, had a couple, couple students come through that training and so they get the CBR Ops student guide, that is going to be 95% of what's on the exam. 
All right, so that's the where we went out to that learningspace.cisco.com. You got an activation code when you took the book. Uh, when you took the book, when you took the course, you got the book. Uh, you have the e-reader, allows you to get a local copy of that book. Still can't print, just a digital copy. Uh, but that student guide, that's what, when I teach the course, that's what I reference. I say, the book, that student guide, that is 95% of what you're looking for. You just read that book. The alternative is, well, wait a minute, what if I didn't take the training? Well, Cisco Press, uh, they write those nice green books for all the different courses, the topics, the training that Cisco does. They came out with a official cert guide, the green book, for the Cyber Ops course. Again, we'll have all these links in the description below. So if you didn't attend the official training, but you're interested, you're more of a self-study, uh, you self-study for your certs, you can go out, get that green book, read through it. It's the same content we look at with the student guide, just slightly different analogy, slightly different team putting it together, but it's the same sections talking over the same concept. So again, read that book, and that's going to be 95% of what you need. Now, you're going to do one of those. All right, You're either going to grab the student guide from the course because you attended the training, or you're going to do the Cisco Press book. All right? It's redundant to do both because they are covering the same content. Now, in addition to one of those, what you're going to do is the next two items. Cisco has provided some additional study materials. I know it's a nice URL that I'm going to put in the bottom there. The cyber ops or CBR ops study materials are a couple additional videos, additional walkthroughs, additional white papers that gives you more information around the, co the topics, the concepts in the student guide or the, the green book, whichever one you used. All right. So if you get it, if you are understanding what's in the student guide, the study materials are extra. Don't worry too much about them. But if you're having trouble understanding a given concept, you need a little more information, another way to explain it, check out those study materials. They're going to give you some more examples. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go read these two publications from NIST. NIST, your National Institute of Standards and Technology, you're right, these wonderful publications defining standards in <laughs> technology, how we should approach investigations, how we should lock down data, uh, how we should respond in certain, uh, to certain events. So those two publications, 800-61, 800-86, 61 Rev 2, I should say, they tell you on the exam topics, there are questions on the exam where those publications are where you will find the answers. It's not your student guide. It's not in the green book. Go read those in addition to the course content. Now, as far as content goes, that's it. I have no other books, no other white papers. If you read the book and you read those publications, optionally the study materials, that's it. That, if you know those, you are in a great spot to take the exam. Now, the next question I always get, well, what about practice tests, practice exams? I want to try before I actually go take the exam. Okay, got two options. We, are, we always want to be careful about taking practice exams, looking for practice exams online, because there's always folks out there trying to sell the exam answer. Right? got to stay away from that. So what's a good source to get a practice exam from a given vendor? Though a practice test from that same vendor. So we're looking here, Cisco has on their learning network store, CBR Ops practice tests. Current price is $79. There's a pool of just over, just around 400 questions. Every time you attempt it, it pulls 75 random questions from that pool. You do it multiple times, you will, and yes, you can attempt it multiple times. You will get exposed to all the questions in that pool. It's not the actual questions on the exam, but it gets you in the mindset of what questions are they asking, how in depth are they going to get on those protocols. It's a practice exam. And you run through that several times. There you go. I would definitely use the Cisco practice tests for the Cisco exam. The alternative is if you went the green press route, the green press, the Cisco press, the green book route, then what comes with the green book are some practice exams. You got two options here. 
if you buy the basic Cisco Press book, even the, just the digital copy, it comes with two practice exams, and you can run through those multiple times. And if you buy the premium option, it comes with four practice exams. And again, you guys run through those multiple times. So I've had a couple folks where if there was a deal going on, even though they attended the official five-day training course, they got the student guide, they went ahead and bought the green book as well because it was on sale and it came with practice tests and you get some pretty comparable pricing All right, i'm not uh, i'm not going to quote the exact price in the green book right now because it varies they, they do sales and they do sales drives um, but it's very comparable pricing to what you're going to see for the practice tests on that learning network website so that's where i would go use the cisco practice tests either from the book or from the website for that cisco exam Hopefully this has been helpful and good luck on your exams.